So here's where I got my start when I was a kid. I was playing all sorts of games like this, like Tetris, Mario, Donkey Kong, um, Cosmic Osmo, which was one of the first um, CD-ROM games for the Mac ever. That's my inspiration. Here are two games that I've worked on. The first one, um, the first iPhone app I ever wrote was Pac-Man for Namco. And then my most recent app was Mafia Wars, which came out about two months ago. Um, yeah, so that's where I'm at right now. So here's a story. This is how I got started in programming. I was about six years old, and I, um, I had this babysitter who's about 16. And I'd been playing all sorts of games on my computer, like Frogger and stuff on the Apple IIe, which is the computer we had just gotten. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so this girl, she was our neighbor, her name was Loretta, and she wrote this program on the command line that just printed her name over and over. And I was amazed. It was, <laughs> that was the first time I'd ever seen anybody, like the, that was the first time I'd put it together that someone could make a computer do something. So I was fascinated. I didn't really get started programming like more than that besides making a couple web pages and running some scripts until I was in college also like, like the previous speakers. Um, I was originally a dance major when I started college and decided to take CS 101 and kind of fell in love with it again. <laughs> um, so here's a little bit about the company I work for. We're called Zynga, we're here in San Francisco. Mainly we do social networking apps for Facebook, MySpace, High Five, um, pretty much all the major social networking sites. And we also have an iPhone team. I was the first iPhone programmer hired there. I started back in October. So social casual games are for people to play against their, their real life friends online. And casual games are, are the kind of game where you can pick it up and play for about 15 minutes or so, and it's not a big deal if you have to leave or whatever. It's not like World of Warcraft or more hardcore games where you have to put in a good chunk of time to get anything out of it. It's a kind of game where you pick it up, you play, and you have a good time. iPhone games are in your pocket all the time. You have a couple minutes. Like the average session for an iPhone game is seven to 15 minutes. We also use Facebook Connect in our apps. Um, this is Live Poker, um, which is the first one I worked at at Zynga. So um, you can play this against people that are playing on Facebook or MySpace, they all use the same set of game servers. Um, so we just thought it was a natural progression to take social games from just the web and put them on the iPhone also. So that's what we're up to. So here's, here's a little bit about the general structure, um, code structure of a casual game. Um, so you've got the app's main entry point at the top there. And then, so there's where you'll present like a menu or something like um, before you get into the game type stuff. Then when you do get the user into the game, you start what's called a, a main loop that alternately updates all the data structures and then paints to the screen. And these are some examples of the kind of things that, like the data structures that you'll be handling. Like, so the user could be a little spaceship. So you'll, ad you'll take input from the, the IO, shown in, in pink here, which is often a keyboard or a mouse or, um, in my case, a touch screen or accelerometer. Um, and so yeah, you update the data and then you draw it to screen. Update the data, draw it to screen. Um, and so, And here's a little tiny bit of code that's just like the most simple illustration of this. And this is in Objective-C. Um, so you create a timer. Right now I have this firing at um, 25 milliseconds. And it calls this function main loop that updates the data structures and then paints to the screen just over and over. OK, so I wrote this game um, last weekend I'll show you it. <laughs> I called it Penguin Madness. <laughs> so you're a penguin, 
and you have to avoid hitting the ice and you have to avoid hitting the ground and I'm just dynamically, oh I hit the ground. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just dynamically generating the, the scenery, the ice and the ground um, and this is running at a frame rate of, of uh, 25 milliseconds. And it's just a one button game, like if the user is touching on the screen, then the penguin's accelerating upward, and if they let go, the penguin accelerates downward. So this, um, yeah, <laughs> I put this on my phone, so if you guys wanna play it later, you can come see me. <laughs> it's, you know, fascinating. <laughs> so my next step, I was, gonna, um, I was gonna add some fish that come in from the side that you need to try to eat. <laughs> we'll see. Here's a little bit about Objective-C, which is um, the main programming language for the iPhone and for the Mac desktop applications. You can also code in, um, in C and C++ and compile it all together. Um, all right, so if, if you're not used to Objective-C, and I think most people aren't, you'll see a lot of brackets, and you'll be like, what is with all these brackets? Am I dealing with Lisp or something? This is crazy. So first of all, you need to get over the brackets. And then I'll talk about um, memory management, synthesized instance variables, and categories. All right, yeah, people complain, but you should get over it. It's just, it just means, it's like you're calling a function, except it's a little bit different. It's, you're sending a message to an object at runtime, which means you don't have to worry about the type of the object, which, um, so in, in compiled languages, you usually do have to worry about types. And in um, scripting languages or um, like Ruby and, and Python, you usually don't have to worry about the type. So this brings us a little bit closer to the interpreted languages folks. Um, memory management. Um, this is not really that interesting. <laughs> I think I think most people that would care about this kind of stuff are probably at the the WWDC beer bash right now. <laughs> so yeah, memory management properties. Um, so you write a class, you've got instance variables. You can declare properties, which then you can synthesize, so you don't have to write getters and setters for them. So this saves you a lot of time, and it allows you to um, yeah <laughs> save a lot of time. Categories, you can add methods to a class without having to subclass it, which I think is pretty cool. Because if, you, if you've got a framework, there's an object in it, and you don't like the way something works, you can change it on the fly and rewrite it the way you think it should have been written. So here's some of the, the blogs I read and stuff you can check out if you're interested in Objective-C. Um, yeah, furbo.org. A friend of mine, Craig Hockenberry, writes this. It's one of the best um, Objective-C blogs. Coco with Love. If you're kind of intermediate level, this he posts a couple times a week, just hints and tips and cool stuff. Toucharcade.com, iPhone game reviews. Um, it's kind of fun to keep up with. And then Stack Overflow. If you're a programmer, you're probably already on here. Um, Here's my contact info. Um, yeah, that's about it. Thanks. <laughs>